Hello friends, it's the Carnivore Rabbi. We're here, as my friend Reverend Jimmy says, to meet, pray, and love. And it's a beautiful day, probably our first real spring day in Chicago. And it was a perfect day to go outside, watch the eclipse with my oldest daughter who got out of school early. It was just wonderful. I hope all of you got a chance to watch it. And it was pretty cool. The Nobel Prize winner that I'm referring to in the title is Daniel Kahneman who just passed away. And you might be thinking, what on earth does he have to do with the carnivore diet? But he has a lot to do with it. His ideas really help us understand why people uh, often fail on carnivore and what we can do to succeed in it. But first, a little background on Kahneman. He was actually born in Israel. And when Israel wasn't even a country, it was still a territory, part of the British Empire. And he grew up there, eventually came to the United States, studied here, taught at various schools, ultimately at Princeton, and he won the Nobel Prize. I think it was 2002. And what he really did was build the science around what's often referred to as behavioral economics and behavioral psychology. So oftentimes, economists and scientists assume that people are rational, that they make very clear reasonable choices. And oftentimes we're not. So for example, if you could flip a coin and you knew it was always 50-50, and if you get heads, you win $110, and if you get tails, you lose $90. But you would always want to take that bet because if it's 50-50 in the long run, then you're always gonna come out $10 ahead because the odds are in your favor. Uh, but we don't. In fact, because we have something called loss aversion. When we lose money, it hurts much more than when we gain money, even if it's the same amount. Our loss aversion makes us less reasonable than mathematics would suggest. That's just a very simple example. And he used this to show how we are often irrational across many different parts of life. And there are certain rules for understanding that irrationality. And that absolutely changed the fields of economics and psychology. But what does this have to do with carnivore? Three of his ideas really help us understand it. The first is called anchoring. Anchoring is an idea that Kahneman developed with his research partner, Amos Tversky. And the idea of anchoring is that we have certain beliefs and ideas shaped often in childhood or by some experience that we didn't have control over that shape the way we view the world and they diminish our rationality. So for example, some people, we are shaped with the idea, it's an anchor idea, that vegetables are good for us. Often this is taught to us early in childhood, eat your vegetables, even though no baby likes vegetables, you see them spit it out. But we are anchored in the idea that vegetables are good for us, even though there is really no rationality, no proof. In fact, it's often the opposite. But that's the anchor idea. Breaking away from an anchor idea is very difficult. Another anchor idea that people my age, let's say 45 and under, grew up with the idea that fat is really bad for you. Fat is unhealthy. That's an anchor idea impressed upon us in our youth. Or that meat, red meat, is unhealthy. These ideas permeate the media. They anchor our beliefs and they're very difficult to change. It's like changing our cultural norms and habits. And if you want to succeed in carnivore, you have to identify your anchor beliefs and see whether they are truly make sense. When it comes to vegetables, of course, they don't make sense. Kahneman showed how all of us are shaped by multiple anchor beliefs and that if we don't examine them, they can hold us back. Second area where he was very influential and helps me understand the carnivore diet much better is the idea of prospect theory. This is related to loss aversion as well. Uh, prospect theory says that we will generally do what we can to avoid losses and make irrational decisions to that end. So for example, if we are, let's say you're at a casino and you're losing money and you're down $200 and you can double or nothing, or even let's say 
the you could win $100 or lose another $200. You are more likely to take that bet when you're down than when you're up because you really want to get out of being down. Our human nature is we do not want to experience loss. So we will do what we can to get out of that loss even if it's a bad bet, even if it has the greater potential to put us more into loss because we're just thinking about getting out of the loss. In other words, we exaggerate the impact of losses. Now, what does this have to do with carnivore? We often exaggerate what it will be like to give up certain foods. We say to ourselves, oh my goodness, I could never give up chocolate. Or, oh no, I could never give up my ice cream. We tell ourselves that. Even other things, oh, we, I could never give up my diet soda. And so we exaggerate what the effect will be of a loss. But we don't factor in the tremendous gain. And the truth is, we human beings are so adaptable, as Kahneman also pointed out, that we quickly forget about the loss. At the time, it seems monumental, but in the long run, it's not. So understanding that about ourselves, and that's very difficult, it's almost like we have to step out of our own human nature, but understanding how we exaggerate the effect that losses will have, if we can do that, we'll be much more rational. This isn't related to carnivore, it's related more to financial markets and trading, but I once had a, a very successful trader in my congregation here in Chicago, and I asked him, what's the secret to being a good trader? And he said, the ability to take losses. So if you can take a loss and then bounce back and still make rational decisions, you'll end up winning if you have a good strategy. And I think the same is true with carnivore. If you can recognize, yes, I'm gonna have a loss, but it's not gonna be that bad. And in fact, the gain's gonna be much greater. We can succeed. Third thing Kahneman said, and it's one of my favorite quotes, is that nothing is as important as it seems at the time. In other words, this is actually very similar to loss aversion, but when we are in the midst of something, when we are in pain or hurt by something or annoyed by something, it takes on exaggerated importance. This just happened to me recently. Uh, I was in, in a, uh, a difficult discussion with somebody and it seemed like such a monumental issue. And then I took a pause came back to the conversation an hour later, and it was much more reasonable and came to a wonderful conclusion. When we are in the midst of something, our amygdala, the, the emotional part of our brain, takes over, and that can make us irrational. And Kahneman showed that to us. Now, what does this have to do with carnivore? Well, it's very easy to go on a binge, very easy. We can think to ourselves, oh my God, I can't live without this piece of cake right now. or oh God, that, that pie looks so good, I, I've got to have it. And the emotional part, the craving, the amygdala takes over. Now, if we just walked away and came back an hour later, we might be okay, but it's very difficult. And to be aware of that, to be aware when we are acting irrationally, and it happens to all of us. Spock is a character on Star Trek who's so rational, but he's not a real person. Uh, all of us are emotional. And partly because the amygdala is the oldest part of the brain, it's older than the rational part, that can bring us out of control. And sometimes we will mess up. Sometimes we will fall off the wagon. But at least if we're aware of it, at least if we can realize that what may seem like the most important thing right here at this moment may not really be, we can step back. We can be more rational. So Kahneman ultimately was trying to help us become more rational, thoughtful human beings. And he was fighting an uphill battle because we are emotional creatures. And there's so much in the world that drives us to, to that sense of urgency, that tension. And perhaps Kahneman's greatest contribution was that he helped us see where those biases are and can guide us in being more mindful of them. You can't fix all of them. We're still just human. But carnivore also helps us fix it. I have found, as I talked about in my last video, how it's just much more, we are calmer 
and make more reasonable, thoughtful decisions when we are nourishing ourselves properly. But when we are nourishing ourselves with, or not even nourishing ourselves, just feeding ourselves with seed oils and carbs, we're more agitated and hostile. The proper human diet helps us act reasonably. It's what nourished our ancestors over millions of years, and it's what can nourish us today. So I hope if you get a chance, read Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. It's one of the all-time great books on behavioral and economic psychology, uh, behavioral economics and behavioral psychology, and it can help us make better decisions and live with fewer regrets, just like Carnivore can as well.